Hello, hello. My name is Pranay Prasanna, and this is Lab 3 the Black Hole. Sit back, relax, grab a snack, grab a drink, uh, enjoy my presentation. So to kick things off, this lab is split into two parts. In the first part, we're going to observe the motion of a star orbiting a black hole, and then we're going to calculate the star's net force as well as the mass of the black hole. In this part of the lab, the system is the star and the surroundings are the black hole and outer space. Below you'll see the results of part one, and we'll get into this later. Now if we shift over to the right of the screen, we'll look at part two. The goal of part two is to determine the initial velocity needed for a spaceship to get close enough to the black hole from part one without crashing. And in this, the system is a spaceship and the surroundings are the black hole, the star, and outer space. This picture is the result of part two. Let's take a look at the fundamental principles before we get into the coding. The first thing is Newton's second law. And if you look at this, we can see delta P, which is the change in momentum, is equal to the net force times delta D, which is change in time. The net force can also be broken up into its parallel components and its perpendicular components. It should be noted that the change in speed is determined by its parallel components, and the change in direction is determined by its perpendicular components. Over to the right, we've covered this in lab two, but we'll be using our gravitational force formula, as well as our position and velocity update formulas. Now to the coding, the part we all love. We'll start at the top left, our initial values. Our initial values, we have our gravitational constant and the star's mass. Delta T is set to 86,400 seconds, and that is the number of seconds in a day. Now if you look at the top right, we're gonna calculate the net force. And the net force is calculated by finding delta V and delta P. And then we're taking delta P and dividing it by delta T to get dP dt, which is our net force. Now moving on to the components. In the bottom left, we'll calculate the parallel force. To do this, we're going to find the change in magnitude of our P initial and our P final. Multiplying that by P hat, we'll get our parallel force component. Now lastly, on the bottom right, we'll calculate the perpendicular force. Since we know net force is the sum of the parallel force and the perpendicular force, we can simply just subtract the parallel force from the net force to get our perpendicular force. All right, so now we can find the mass of the black hole. And to do this, we're gonna rearrange the gravitational formula. And instead of solving for net force, we're gonna solve for the mass of the black hole. After we do this, we're also going to create a total, which will keep summing up the black hole. That way we can find its average at the end of the while loop. This step undergoes a lot of calculations, so there may be rounding errors present. Now we're going to move on to part two. Quick disclaimer, this will have a lot of coding. <laughs> no, so we'll start off with our initial values. Similar to last time, we're going to have the gravitational constant, but on top of that, we're going to have the planet's mass, the ship's mass, and we're gonna have the black hole mass, which we calculated from part one. Note that this mass may be wrong because of the rounding errors from before, so that may have an effect on future calculations in this part. Now we're gonna calculate the net force on the spaceship. To do this, we'll use the gravitational formula and just plug in our values. We're gonna do the same thing again to calculate the net force on the planet, just using the gravitational formula and plugging in our values. Finally, after all of that is done, in the bottom right, we'll use our velocity update formula and our position update formula to calculate the movements of the planet and the spaceship. And boom, here we have our graphic. And in this graphic, the aqua orbit is actually the planet and the purple orbit is our spaceship. Now you'll see the spaceship does get very close to the black hole, but fortunately for us, we don't get sucked in. So now let's ask some questions. How are the net forces parallel and perpendicular components different from change in momentum's parallel and perpendicular components? Well, they're essentially the same, but they're calculated differently. The net forces parallel and perpendicular components are calculated with the mass of the black hole, while the momentum's parallel and perpendicular components are calculated through observing the star's position, velocity, and momentum, all with respect to time. So now if we wanted to get into orbit with the black hole, what would the initial velocity need to be? 
It took me like 30 minutes, but eventually, through trial and error, I was able to find the initial velocity vector that would create this orbit on the right. That vector being negative 1 times 10 to the 6 in the x component, 8 times 10 to the 6 in the y component, and 0 in the z component. Well, that's it. That concludes my presentation. I hope you had a great time.